So let's have a small introduction, quick introduction. My name is Nitesh. Uh, I've been in the solar industry for past seven years. Uh, I started my career as a media guy. I used to write an article in the magazine. Now I'm presently working in Godrej uh, as a regional guy. Uh, I take care of complete uh, sales, execution, ONM, and uh, engineering and everything. Uh, so we did about 100 plus rooftop installation last year. Uh, total about 10 plus megawatt rooftop installation. We are glad that we are putting about uh, 1.5 megawatt to 2 megawatt every year in our own factory. Mohali, we are coming up with 1 megawatt of installation in our refrigerator factory, new refrigerator factory, which we are using REC and SMA module, REC module and SMA motors. Uh, so we, what we did, we did only quality installation. So uh, I, I would say I have a hundred plus, hundred percent satisfying customer. So let's start with that. Uh, myself Ashok Naira, I'm heading a company called Infosan Power. Uh, we are focusing in uh, residential and industrial uh, rooftop segment, uh, both CapEx and OpEx model. Uh, I started my career with Stelling and Wilson around five years back. Uh, I worked in Acme, then with Lays Experts, and this company I started around uh, one and a half years back. That's all. Good afternoon, everybody. I am Satun from Andy Solar Private Limited. We are dealing in rooftop, and we are in Benal in Crust. We moved the beta. Thanks. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I am Kunal Munshi. Uh, I'm representing Sunwriter Technologies. Uh, so we have a uh, wide area of a uh, wide vertical uh, that we work on, uh, right from consulting, uh, designing, owners engineering, lenders engineering to uh, training. Uh, we also do uh, installations uh, for smaller plants. Uh, that's uh, we have an cumulative uh, consulting experience of around one gigawatt, and uh, rooftops we have just started. Uh, so we have completed something around 2 megawatts in rooftops. Good afternoon friends. Myself, Mukesh Gupta from Micromax Group. I started my career as a scientist. I passed out from my IT Delhi. I did my graduation in post graduation in electronics. Started career as a scientist, then became an engineer before they come to be a business. As you know about the Micromax, Micromax entered into the mobile business. We entered into this business in 2010. We started this business as a trader, but in 2001 we started the manufacturing. And today, I feel proud to say that today we are one of the largest manufacturer of mobile phone in India, and we do production of around 100,000 mobile phone per day in our factories. We have set up all this factory in the last three years of time. Energy has been my forte, electronics or energy. So we find a lot of opportunity. We started this business in 2010. We formed this company, Micromix Energy Limited, in 2010. But at that time, when we studied, when we analyzed, comparing it with the China, when the China was also coming it up, we could understand the way the, the China industry is coming it up. First, we have to watch them. We have to understand them. We need to learn from them. I do not say that we are technologists today. But India has to learn a lot from China. With that time has come, opportunity has come up now, challenges are there, and we are here basically to arrange to utilize the solar product now. So 12 gigawatt has happened, industry, India is looking for a gigawatt. We want to contribute in terms of product. I just do not want that we should become a country where we have installation base, but all the parts are being imported from China. It should not happen till what is happening today. So we are focusing more on the product side. There is a basic aim and target to be participating with this, and I wish that the next year of time when we meet again, this industry will see a lot. Manufacturing base at least starting from us, and more many people will come and join us. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. I'm Asmita Patak. I'm heading a business development in the Enables Private Limited. We are MNRE channel partners and have our presence in this industry since a decade. We, are solely, uh, we were earlier into solar thermal and now we have recently started a few years back this solar photovoltaic as well. I am a panel with MNRE as a chartered engineer as well and uh, I have uh, delivered my PPT. So no need to like uh, get very, uh, get into very deep about it. 
Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Sumit Nahata, representing SR Corporate Consultant Private Limited. It's a Raipur based company uh, which initiated its uh, operations in uh, 2003, especially in the field of uh, renewable consulting. In the year 2010, we entered into APC of solar power plant. Today, we have uh, around 11 megawatt installations in all, uh, which uh, has rooftop, ground mounted. We have uh, in rooftop segment, we have more than 6 megawatt. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Ashu Gupta and I represent Ujas Energy Limited. Uh, this company is based out of Indore, and basically, we are known for. Uh, uh, owning and installing large solar pa uh, farms in uh, under REC mechanism. Uh, we also appear in Forbes as the fastest uh, growing company under a billion dollar category in India. And uh, we are also largely into rooftops. And very recently, we have uh, made our presence uh, a very significant presence in the retail home segment. So, probably uh, in this session, we, we should uh, go for an open ended kind of a discussion we have been discussing various questions to the panelists. So I would la ask each of the panelists to give their view what exactly we should do to grow multifold ourselves, grow multifold nationwide, go grow multifold as a as a renewable energy. You know, so in terms of what MNRE should do, what media should do, what EPC contractor should do, what developer should do, or what a component manufacturer should do. So it's, it's a kind of an open discussion, give your views, say three to four, I have jotted down some of the like, what, how we can increase the awareness of the mass people. Probably if we, if we say, uh, how much people are presently aware of the solar technology, solar photovoltaic technology, if we, if we, if we talk about the, the population, industries or the benefit of solar energy. Second, the, the cost of selling solar power plant has reduced me, considerably come down, so how we can need to cope with it. Third, about the mandate, Haryana, I have uh, asked a question to Mr. Shukla in the morning, suppose I have a friend who is in Haryana, he has a factory and he want to, he has an obligation of 40 kilowatt solar power plant and I approach to him and he said, I don't want to stop, I don't intend to stop. Then what is the government next plan? What are the deadlines? Right, this kind of then how we need to reduce the gestation period of solar power plant. For example, each inquiry at present, if if you talk about EPC, it is taking about six to seven months for even getting in hundred kilo of solar power plant, which costs about fifty to sixty lakhs. Then what about the net metering uh, education to the discom official as well? Uh, uh, kind of a clean window or a, or a clear window procedures of a net meeting, timeline to get the net meeting installed. So I would start with Mr. Shok. Very good point, sir. Uh, with my experience of uh, mostly doing business development for rooftop projects, that I'll, I'll focus on that area. I believe uh, there is a lot of uh, awareness among the people. Even uh, residents, uh, people, uh, industries, commercial. Government is doing uh, pretty good basically in creation of the awareness. Um, so, even if you just talk to uh, any of the, if, or simply if you just uh, do a cold calling or if you just meet some of the people, people are pretty much aware about the technology and the benefits. So, it has already become economical. So, uh, there's no need of making more of the push, making it much of the mandatory for uh, people to install. Just need to count the benefits of the technology. Yes, there are some doubts and some myths uh, about the cost, about the kind of panels. Uh, everybody calls their equipment as the best equipment. But again, uh, uh, again, promoting good technology, promoting good equipment, these are the few factors which need to be taken care of. Again, MNRE is doing that, uh, just putting checks and balances for that. Yes, some more awareness to uh, uh, some more uh, channels, media channels and all, that would be great. Nowadays, solar is a secure investment and people going to this day by day, but uh, 
government needs to improve like releasing of subsidy implementation that call all are done by the government now chairman reda today he proves like online portal are available in a reda website so actually i am of the view that uh, you don't need any awareness uh, and i tell you why nobody taught you how to use a smartphone you learned it on your own uh, and why did you learn because it had value to it similarly when we reach a point which uh, we know as the tipping point where solar becomes so cost effective and it starts making economic sense to the consumer yes government is taking initiatives by starting the net metering policy and various other subsidies but subsidies are just to attract you know initial early adopters once the industry matures once the early adopters which actually inspire any technology move on you don't need subsidy the solar prices fall will start making economic sense so the customer uh, who will not need people to tell that this is the technology this is useful he will learn himself you have google for everything so why not for solar right so you don't need an awareness campaign or any such campaign when it starts making economic sense it will start growing automatically right so uh, yes i am i mean so we should not uh, focus on the awareness of solar as a technology but yes we should focus on the awareness of quality we should focus on the awareness of how individual households can you know benefit with this net metering policy oh the consumer is the smartest of the lot right uh, yeah. however smart the manufacturer or the uh, epc contractor would think he is consumer is the smartest he would know right uh, what would make economic sense to him so i mean let's not challenge the uh, uh, um, the knowledge of the consumer yes uh so large scale campaigning or awareness is not required it will come automatically so it's like uh, uh, you just need to start and it will you know uh, move into a snowball effect uh, so that's my view for the sector as i said solar today has become a business opportunity today any person want to enter this business he find this is a easy entrance point awareness too much what as with the price are concerned the cost is coming down technology is coming up technically speaking we are totally dependent on china they are in mass production they have got the experience and what is the price innovation technology innovation we are talking about today it all is coming is happening in china we are just rolling it up so as far as india is concerned yes we are coming up with the project we are doing a gigawatt installation but as far as the raw materials are concerned the components are concerned products are concerned everything is being imported from china today so as far as making india concept is there we are making is making more made in china Installations are happening here. Earlier, we were dependent on the Gulf for the oil for generation of electricity. Today, we are more dependent for our product on China. The energy security. When this mission was started in 2010, it was started with the mission of solar. This energy security means we shall have own our resources, our own fuels. So that was the reason the solar mission was taken up. but technically speaking today yes energy security is happening in terms of installation in the green energy form but as far as the dependency is concerned we are totally depending still on china so we need to this is a bigger challenge for the country and we have to look into this our people our team they need to focus how we can promote our own manufacturing product 
Yes, today we cannot just compare ourselves, we cannot develop in the technology, but as for the manufacturing, is there, yes we can do. We have a manpower, young manpower, educated manpower, we have a vision, we can definitely hard work more than what the Chinese people can do today. The cost of our labor is cheaper. At least we can bring those technology, we can bring to India, we can mass productionize it because the volume has come to India. If that happens and the promotion happens in this category, then we can definitely build our manpower also. So this product what we are going to store is 25 years life. After 4 or 5 years, this company is not going to stay. Many big brands like you heard about Centec, the one of the biggest brands in China got bankrupted. Today in India, in the solar panel module, there are very good brands which are very popular. They are in the bankruptcy mode. You must have heard about the company like Tina and other. They has gone the private company. So we are depending on them. So this project is guaranteed for 25 years. If our people are not trained for it, then how should we are going to survive? So most important, if the manufacturing is there, we are getting the education, our people are getting trained, and that means they can maintain at least if this project, if this company goes off. Now, if you see, uh, in this period, at least it has happened that subsidy has been now made and defined for people who actually need it. <coughs> who actually need it? Now, the people who need subsidy are basically people who are not profit-making uh, organizations. They are social sectors, they are residential sectors, and now it has been restricted mostly and primarily only for that. The push is that uh, it has to give a level playing field to each and every sector. Industry, commercial is a self-sustained uh, uh, sector where they get a lot of AD benefits out of solar what they install and they actually take a double advantage if they take a subsidy. Now this benefit or this level playing field is not, if not available with a social sector like a school, college or a hospital, then it should be uh, compensated by a subsidy. Now, for a long time, subsidy cannot rule any of the business. If it is subsidized, then obviously it will not. So, in the recent time, if you see, in last one month, government has reduced the benchmark cost also for the solar PV project. Up there, it was calculated at the rate of 70 or 80 rupees a watt peak, and now it has been reduced to almost like uh, 60 rupees or 65 rupees a watt peak. In fact, the uh, capital incentive which was given to the government sector has also been reduced proportionately. So, right from 20 rupees, it has been reduced to 12, 12 and a half rupees, if I am not wrong, uh, in the last couple of weeks. So, obviously, yes, subsidy will disappear uh, sooner or later, but till that time, uh, this technology reaches uh, reach the masses, it will uh, remain continuous. So, uh, probably the Mr. Mr. Mukesh can give an answer. Uh, what I find a problem with the subsidy is, if there is subsidy, it should be continuous for the complete financial year or for at least say, two years. What is happening on a real ground, because I am from the sales background, so I, I, I touch upon the, the, the subject which adds more solar power plants. So one school get subsidy for 50 kilowatt, when we get an order for the other school or we approach an order for the other school in the same city, in the same district, subsidy is closed. He say, I will wait for six months, let the subsidy should come. So what are your views? It should continue or it should be stopped? MNRE settled the cases as per the rates of the next financial year. So this is the one thing if they are allowing, if they are giving us a sanction for a certain amount, they should honor that. You have filed a uh, uh, MNRE subsidy file previous year and the rate has come down, so they have given okay. Yeah. But then, then the cost has also reduced down. Sir, but the system was installed in the last year also. The system yeah. was installed in the last year. Okay. Okay. That probably is a separate case. So, Mr. Gupta. Yes, I uh, prefer we come back to the topics what were given to us for the yeah. discussion again, uh, which are key trends and opportunities uh, and some of the case studies for promoting the rooftop solar. Uh, here, uh, I will just uh, give one case study and one uh, new trend what is happening. If you see, one of our examples are uh, many of the big companies, including us. Uh, we didn't uh, started doing a smaller installation than a bigger and the biggest one. We rather prefer to do a bigger one owning ourselves and then doing the larger rooftop and then entering into a, a small residential based installation because uh, the inherent property of solar or inner, inherent success of solar is if it is installed on each and every house, that is my house, your house, Anand's house. So uh, that's the key success of uh, rooftop. 
Now, if we want to achieve this, which will go in thousands, we took this as an assignment and thought, why not to try out uh, doing just 200 or 300 installations in a month. Let us try out doing 200 installations in a month. And then we found out it's more tougher, much tougher to do 200 installations in a month rather than doing a 200 megawatts in one single location. So the only thing which uh, we started doing is uh, uh, something which is called product standardization. Until unless we reach the stage of product standardization, where I just make it like a commodity, like an air conditioner, where you have a calculated number of modules, calculated number of uh, cables, fuses, everything which can be packed in the form of a kit. If it can be uh, packed in the form of a kit and can be dispatched to 200 locations, that's the only way you can cater this entire country. I'm happy that uh, Micromax has come up with a sort of setup of uh, inverters also in India, and then we don't have to depend much on uh, China to every time keep on fire. MNRE has also, like uh, Madam has told, MNRE has come up with a bundling scheme. So every time if I want to do one kilowatt or one house or two house, I don't have to sacrifice with the benefits what uh, is being given by the industry. So uh, that's uh, the new trend which has come up. It is purely and purely to a So let's have a open question and some Q&A. Yeah, see, actually, uh, this is the thing about solar, right? Uh, every rooftop, like rightly pointed out, right? 200 rooftops, 200 different designs, 200 different projects, 200 different. So, the 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 manpower involved increases. Uh, but but, but, but there yeah. are, I tell you, if 200 installations, so there there are 600. EPC contractors in the market. Of course, there are. See, it's, uh, it's not the, 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 the question here is the ease of working also. So here, uh, which I have also personally seen, like uh, a lot of people, I come from a design background, so I know I uh, the the installations that have been uh, that are yeah. normal EPC, even the MNR channel partners, the quality of installation. See, uh, uh, using just an, like uh, uh, pointed out in the earlier sessions, just using an SPD would not make much difference to the call, but it does uh, has uh, quality repercussions, right? So, these are small things, you know, just using a, con uh, a conduit wherein all the cable trays properly uh, tagging it, tailoring, these are small things that comes with, of course, experience, but when uh, they don't cost, it's the quality. And the quality of manpower who is doing or installing the plant. Design is one aspect which is, I would say, non existent in smaller rooftop projects 1 kilowatt, 2 kilowatt, 3 kilowatt. Until unless if it's a very good company or a very good company who is designing. Otherwise, smaller contractors would not care about design. Family to lagana, hope to put it. That's it. So, so that aspect, yeah. I mean, uh, this is one aspect of uh, you know, design. Generally, generally, people say about the quality. And my experience says, uh, if if you install a solar power plant in a reputed company or a good company who has an electrical engineer or a maintenance guy, he will make EPC contactor to do all the conducting, all the cable trays. He will not. Give you last, you know, 10, 20% of the money unless yeah, you, yeah, you satisfy. The consumers are, are educated, they are kids. Second point, the cost of power plant coming down, you know, uh, if, if you talk about say 20 years back or 15 years back, you need to pay for the receiving college. Why cost has come down? Because of the competition. So if there is a competition, consumer get benefit. So we need to bear with it. So we will open a session for Q and A, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, very interesting yeah, discussion uh, and a very lively discussion. Uh, my question is for Mr. Ashu Gupta. Uh, you know, there's a certain behavior we are witnessing of the discoms in certain states. I think all of us are aware of what has happened to open access and uh, the levy of certain additional charges for solar power in any form in the state of Maharashtra and probably in some other states. So, where do you see it going? So, one thing you have to uh, accept that uh, the renewable sector or the open access captive is always a uh, competition to the disk or the conventional power and obviously there will be a rift between the two technologies and the two segments. We are all uh, a different segment altogether. Uh, nevertheless, uh, this leads to a very healthy competition and the moment 
uh, additional surcharge or additional surcharge on the open access was imposed. Uh, by the time uh, it, it was the pressure on the developers also to brought, bring down their cost so that again uh, the margins can be uh, brought to a certain level. It is true that uh, the moment the conventional power of the DISCOM starts uh, increasing losses because of the stranded power, because of open access of captive, uh, the regulations and the tariff policy allows you to put uh, those surcharges. It cannot be passed on uh, to the common public where they, are, uh, they pay more because of the open access what you use. So basically it brings a healthy competition where you reduce your cost and bring your margins uh, at the same time. Question specifically for residential, when do you guys think that RESCO in residential will kick in? Because again, that's the model which is successful in the US, uh, don't you think CapEx model in residential will have inherent limitation? The moment uh, you see in India when uh, people pick up their own newspaper and putting their own money on, on the tray and you don't have to ask them for the money, then you will you'll see a spoiler. Sir, I think uh, that's really a very good model. But until unless uh, some discounts are getting involved, I believe in India it is not at all possible. So smaller project is difficult. It's very, very difficult. But again, uh, why, uh, why do you need... Uh, Pretty house owners we have done in the US. Their model is essentially residential in the US. See, that's a. Inherently, the US. I like credit rating. See, inherently, the US market is very different from the Indian market. Uh, people there adhere by the contracts. In India, contract is just a piece of paper. If the consumer has signed that, okay, fine, I give you a rooftop, and if I am uh, signing that this much, I will pay. Uh, to you, I will adhere by the contract for 25 years. But in India, the value of that contract is just that 100 rupees stamp paper, <laughs> nothing more than that. Of course, it is. Uh, you can see nobody wants to go in litigation for a smaller five kilo, five lakh, ten lakh uh, uh, of value of project. But that is not because one judicial cost is very high. In US, that's not there. If there is litigation, it gets solved quick. No, no, correct. But now there's also a point of see the car financing. Of course, so, of course. Now the economics has come in solar. Yes. Nobody is going to keep it. At uh, six months down the line, eight months down the line, we are going to be looking at even further lower cost of the time. Yes, I agree. Sir, so, financing is a different aspect in terms of, see, RESCO is uh, when I install on a rooftop, but financing is good. Civil, I mean, if we can have a model like car financing in solar, with that, can, uh, that is coming, that is coming. There are companies which are uh, actually financing residential rooftops uh, <laughs> at, at that particular attractive interest rate. But, but again, uh, do we need that kind of model in India now because cost has I think already reduced a lot. No, but yes, that is the see, but the car one kilowatt one system if we are getting at a 60,000 or 70,000 whatever prices. I think and uh, even no financing would be interested on that much of uh, scheme. See, I mean, if you can finance a car for four lakh, I mean, you can definitely finance a rooftop for four lakh. That model now in India. Market will determine. Yeah, market would be better with that model. Yes, I agree there. Probably the I I would see residential sector to pick up if if company like Mahindra, Godrej. Tie up with Bajaj finance, keep kind of so, so it can be given on some kind of an EMI kind of a basis for say four years or three years. That that is one part. And second, in the morning, Ms. Lal told uh, uh, that if if there is a tri-party agreement within the discount, that problem. But I'm not sure whether how much installation they are going to do on a residential invest on a resident, even if there is a tri-party agreement. <laughs> At the tariff, tariff about six, seven rupees. They cannot reduce the table on a residential five kilowatt, say four rupees or five rupees. It, it will not make any sense. So I think we. You know, coming to that one kilowatt point which you made, you know, the other aspect of Indian power situation in residential is grid downtime. Barring cases like Mumbai or Delhi, you know, you have grid downtime is a fact of life. So you have to factor in the storage. The moment you factor storage, Inverter becomes a hybrid inverter and your cost curve moves up. So, <coughs> those things I think probably will play out in time. So, I think that's a very. I think we will end up, we will again congratulate Eco International. They are doing a fantastic job doing conferences, reaching up to the corner. So, Mr. Anand Gupta, I think we, we need a very uh, big round of applause for Mr. Anand Gupta. Thank you very much. Uh